Theodore. Morning, Archie. And to what do we owe this unwelcome interruption? I thought you might like to know Mrs. Brunner has arrived. She's early. The Brasso Catalia looks buoyant this morning. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. She arrived in a Rolls and has the appearance of someone unaccustomed to being kept waiting. The Brasso Catalia have been undernourished lately. Which gives them something in common with your bank balance. I've ordered more fur bark. Good. Archie, did you know that shredded fur bark is in wide use for epiphytic orchids? I know it's April and the tax man comment. I know there's a lady down in your office who can afford your overpriced talents. I have no talents. I have genius or nothing. The cymbidium seems a bit too moist. She asked me to inform you that she has a busy schedule, is pressed for time. If her business with me does not take precedence over everything else in her life, then it is too trivial for me to consider. I will be down at the usual time. Shall we attend to the dendrobium? And a bruise those egg whites. He will be down at his usual time, unquote. She hasn't taken a case in three months. We'll be beginning to need things. I told him. I take it she's still there? Yes, but increasingly fidgety. Respectfully begs your indulgence, we'll be with you forthwith. Suggest that I offer you some coffee, tea, or something stronger if you prefer. We have a fair port, Dublin Stout, Madeira. As a special guest, we have a Hungarian wine from the cellar of the vineyard. Thank you, no. Well, how about a guided tour of the premises? This paperweight, for instance. Petrified wood, which a man named Dugan used as a murder weapon in a case Mr. Wolf solved several years ago. Now, if you look close, you can still see a blood stain. I'm kidding. This letter opener, it's harmless, right? Wrong. Used by a guy named Mortimer to do his wife in. I'll spare you the details. How am I doing? Mr. Goodwin, I came here to see Nero Wolf and have no intention of leaving until I do. It is not necessary to entertain me. No fair songs, snappy dances? No. Gin rummy, backgammon, hide and seek, we aim for please. Nothing. Nothing. Anyone ever tell you what lovely eyes you have? Since you're obviously determined to prattle, tell me about that picture. It's the Dean of Baker Street himself, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. I know that. What I want to know is whether there's any truth to the widely circulated rumor that Nero Wolf is Sherlock Holmes' son. Mr. Goodwin has not sufficient information to reply to your question, and too much sense to answer if he did. As for myself, I resent and resist any attempt to inquire into my personal history or affairs. Mrs. Brunner, I presume. Mr. Wolf. Oh, aren't they gorgeous? What do you know about orchids? Ah, that uh, they are delicate and expensive. Two common misconceptions, both attributable to that barbaric ritual, the high school prom. The florist overcharges. The young man pins it on the girl's gown, and the rest of the evening is devoted to crushing it between them. This fine specimen is commonly called the moth orchid. If you please. I prefer to stand. I prefer eyes at a level. Do I have to tell you who I am? Widow of Roy Bruner. Bruner Realty. Owner of several dozen office buildings, one son, one daughter, the son recently married, being groomed to inherit the empire. Shall I tell you who I am? I obviously know a great deal about you. I wouldn't be here. You know something, but a great deal I think not. Since you arrived shortly after 10 a.m., 
and it is common knowledge that with rare exception, I devote the hours between nine and 11 each morning and four and six each afternoon exclusively to my plants. Yes, that's right. So to qualify as that rare exception. I prefer ignorance to presumption. Are you always so curt? I have all the simplicities, including that of brusqueness. Please, state your business. Well, may I speak freely in front of Mr. Goodwin? Anything too confidential for him would find me deaf. Are you acquainted with a book titled Inside the FBI? Yes. Well, that's the one where the uh, author tries to separate Mr. Hoover from his halo and reduce the Bureau to human proportion. I said I was acquainted with it. Yes, both of us. How do you feel about it, the book? I think I speak for Mr. Goodwin as well as myself when I say that it is dangerous for any institution no matter how well-intentioned, to become enshrined on a pedestal that renders it immune to criticism and above the law. The FBI needed a good kick in the pants, and that book gave it to him. Excuse Mr. Goodwin. He's a self-made man, and the job is still under construction. What is this book to do with you and your presence here this morning? It impressed me so strongly, I bought 10,000 copies and sent them to people all over the country. Good for you. <laughs> Bad for me. In sending those books, I am being followed night and day. My mail shows evidence of tampering. I suspect my phone is a tamp. Did you send letters with the books? Uh, my personal card, in some cases a brief message. Then you shouldn't be surprised. I'm not a wage slave with a job I can't afford to lose. Does that megalomaniac think he can hurt me? He is hurting you. He is annoying me, and I want him stopped. I want you to stop him. This check, drawn in your name, for $50,000, is a retainer. When you say stop him, you mean, I take it, compel the FBI to stop annoying you? Yes. How? I don't know, nor do I. I am neither a thaumaturge nor a dunce. The FBI has hundreds of agents and unlimited resources. I have Mr. Goodwin and several part-time operators. No, madam. You invited it, and you have it. I don't disapprove of your sending the books, but it was quixotic. Do you realize what it's like to be under constant surveillance? Innocent actions misinterpreted, the slightest indiscretion magnified. They won't keep it up forever. And as you say, you are not a drudge with a job to lose. I heard you were afraid of nobody and nothing. One can dodge folly without backing into fear. One hundred thousand. You succeed, you will receive a fee in addition. If you fail, is yours. Any suggestions? Tear it up before all those zeros affect your better judgment. You forget, it's April. The tax man cometh. Mr. Wolf is flattered by your generosity and touched by your confidence, but respectfully declines. Shall we show Mrs. Bruner to her car? Yes. And uh, look sharp. If she's being tailed, as she claims, you can easily verify it. You are taking a case. I doubt it. But courtesy demands I think on it and notify you tomorrow. Good day. Good day. Mr. Wolf takes the case. There will, of course, be a check for you personally. Bribery, Mrs. Bruner? Desperation. What's your name? It's Charles. Okay, Charlie. Now listen very close.
doing? Follow him. It's a one-way street. Who cares? Follow him. Is that flummery? No, sir. She's being followed, all right. New York, 431 RCY. Call that girl at City Hall who thinks you're irresistible and find out who it belongs to. You really thinking of going ahead with this thing? Suppose it's not the FBI. If Mrs. Bruner is being pursued for other and private reasons, this check might be legitimately earned. What other and private reasons? I haven't the foggiest. Which is why Mr. Cohen of the Gazette is dining with us this evening. You invited him? I reserve that pleasure for you. Ask him to be here at 7. He won't come. He says he's sick of supplying us with information. And tell him Fritz is preparing lamb kidneys with green peppers, served with dumplings and burnt sugar, doused in olive oil, seasoned with salt, pepper, thyme, dry mustard, mace, and brush twice with deviled butter. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Go on. for dessert. My orchids are my concubines. Insipid, expensive, parasitical, and temperamental. I breed them in their diverse forms and colors to the limits of perfection, then give them away. Well, have you never sold one? Never. Has he told you about his new hobby, throwing darts? It is not a hobby, but an activity undertaken to placate Dr. Volmer, who thinks I weigh too much. Who do you suppose gave him that idea? <laughs> You may laugh, sir, but I owe my life to these excess pounds which insulate my feelings. Had I stayed lean and kept moving about, I should have died long ago. Yes, Fritz. A call for Archie and Miss Reinhardt. From your friend from City Hall. Now, take it from the office. Pardon me? Quite a lot, Archie. You're fortunate to have them. You might as well say I'm fortunate to have arms, legs, eyes. He lies, of course, and so do I, even to clients when it's advisable. But he would never lie to me, nor I to him, in a matter where mutual trust and respect are involved. We were talking about you, Archie. Uh, Mr. Wolf said that, that your lack of brilliance, though regrettable, was uh, a triviality and probably for the best, since two brilliant minds under one roof would be intolerable. Oh, oh. What did Miss Reinhardt have to say? Bad news? Disappointing. Shall we adjourn to the office? I sense I'm about to sing for my supper. Tell Fritz to fetch a bottle of the Remissier. Shoot. Mrs. Rachel Bruner. Bruner Realty. Filthy Rich. Sent copies of that book on the FBI to all the important people she could think of. I didn't get one. Any idea why she did it? Presumably a public service. She had no grievance against the FBI? Not as I know of. She has now. They have her and those close to her under surveillance. Outrageous, but not surprising. She would like me to do something about it. I'm considering it. We couldn't even get started. Tell him he's not. That last was irrelevant. I'm often irrelevant. It confuses people. I am offered a job with the largest retainer in my experience, and you, who are always yammering about our financial state, want me to decline, not because it might be impossible, but because it would give offense to a certain man in his organization, and he might retaliate. I didn't say that. It was implicit. You are cowed, daunted. Uh, he has a point. How would you get started? 
They blatantly advertise their presence to scare me off. We will step on their toes to signal our acceptance of the challenge, possibly produce the reaction which will be useful. What toes? That is where our good friend, Mr. Cohen, who is always on the side of the angels, comes in. That is where Mr. Cohen goes out. Good evening, gentlemen. All I ask is a word on a few of the Bureau's current and more questionable activities which have escaped public notice. Me spread rumors about one of our most sacred institutions? In strictest confidence, as usual. Replenish Mr. Cohen's glass. And, uh, take notes. Who's that? The cook. Fritz Brenner. He runs the house. I think he spotted us. Good. Good morning, Fritz. Is it? Is it? There are two men in a car watching this house. I know. Hey, why smell griddle cake? Archie, Archie! Why are they watching? What's going on here? Did Mr. Wolf tell you? He said that all doors are to be bolted and windows locked at all times and that I am to be circumspect. What does that mean? Say nothing to anyone on the phone you wouldn't want to read in the paper. Do nothing that you wouldn't want to see on TV. Archie, I want to know. I have a right. Bien, I demand to know. You know what the FBI is? Certainly. Mr. Hoover. That's what he thinks. On behalf of a client, we are going to pinch Mr. Hoover's nose. He being touchy will attempt to stop us. Sounds difficult. To you and me. But to the ample one, our illustrious employer, a routine chore. Here, Mr. Wolf. My request, you are to use your best efforts to make the FBI cease their harassment of me and my family. Whatever the outcome, the $100,000 I have given you will not be subject to claim by me. And if you get the result I desire, I will pay an additional fee to be determined by you, yours, etc., Mrs. Rachel Bruner. I'm to get her to sign this. Yes. Or she won't. She will. Then what? You have the lead Mr. Cohen gave us? Yeah. Evers Electronics, Ernst Muller, Julia Fenster. All three of which I lay ten to one will come to nothing. Any spoke may lead to the hub. Providing there's a wheel, which we both doubt. You think I would ask you to engage in futile exercise merely to justify the keeping of a fee? There's a guy outside looking to tail me. I hate to keep him waiting. Ciao. Sometimes you wound me, Archie. Pierce me to the quick. I'll take him. The time will be 1047. <laughs> My request, you ought to use your best efforts to make the FBI cease their harassment of me and my family. Whatever the outcome, 
$100,000 I have given you will not be subject to claim by me. If you get the result I desire, I will pay an additional fee to be determined by you. I'm supposed to sign this. Yes. I don't like it. It says, quote, if you get the result I desire, unquote. So you're not signing a blank check? Suppose I refuse. Mr. Wolf couldn't possibly tackle it without something in writing. What if it got so hot you wanted out, leaving him in? What if you tried to hedge on what you hired him to do, wanted the retainer back? I'm not a hedger. Which is why I'm sure you'll sign. I'll have to call my lawyer and read it to him. Of course. Excuse me. office. Yeah. Very pretty. The painting. Take a letter. I'm kidding. Sarah Dacos, right? You remember. How long have you been Mrs. Burns' secretary? Three years, going on four. What did you do before that? I know you're a detective. You don't have to prove it. You have to keep practice, right? Well? I was Mr. Burner's secretary. When he passed away, Mrs. Burner kept me on. You're not taking notes. In here, veritable computer. It gave you the idea the FBI is telling you. Someone is. Who else would it be? You're sure you're being tailed? They do everything but wear signs. That's what we in the trade call an open tail. They want you to know. Did you suggest sending copies of that book to Mrs. Bruner? No. Do you know who did? No one did. It was my own idea. There you are, all signed. I uh, assume there's a carbon for me. Of course. Thank you. Anything else? Yes, but it's meant for your ears only. Miss Dacos is the soul of discretion. Mr. Wolf's orders, I'm powerless. How about I cover my ears? They might be wired for sound. <laughs> Search me. Not now, but how about a rain check? Be still, my heart. Sarah. I'll be in Glover's office. All right. We probably won't have anything to ask you or tell you until there's a break, but we might. If you get a message, a cat may look at a king. Go to Rusterman's restaurant. A cat may look at a king. Rusterman's restaurant. Is that all? You said you came to Mr. Wolf and gave him that check because you were being annoyed. True. Mr. Wolf thinks there's more to it. Feels there's something buried somewhere about you and yours that you don't want dug up and you're afraid they will. If that's so, he wants to know not what it is, but how urgent it is. And sure, do they get any close? Not as far as I know. Not yet. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, how's the apple pie? Like Mother used to make. I'll have it anyway. You got a cigarette machine? Down there. I'm gonna break this for cigarettes, please. Hey, mister, you're changed! Bullseye. Where to? Turn some corners until I'm sure I'm loose. Cops? FBI. Hey, someone's always bought again. 
Always. What kind of information? <clears throat> yeah, average here. You're calling me. You take three days to make a delivery, you're calling me. Don't call me! I said, what kind of information? You had a government contract that was canceled because the security check on your vice president uncovered certain facts about his personal life. He told me, he told my secretary, that you represented Nero Wolf. Wolf is working for the government? Private client who wonders if maybe you got a raw deal. Finds a newspaper, right? Wrong. Television. Right, too. Fine magazine. Newsbreak. It's somebody who thinks the FBI is getting too big for their britches. FBI! You're FBI! Get out of here! I'm on your side! All I want is some information! Were you hurt? Feelings. I spent the next five hours looking for Julia Fenster. Got my first break. I didn't find her. Would you like Fritz to warm up some curry duck? No. But I can't wait to see what you got planned for tomorrow. You're angry. Who gave you that idea? It's partly your stomach that you haven't eaten. If not the duck, then an omelet. Nothing. No man ever got less out of a day. It's got to be a record. There's some hit and miss in every operation. This one's all hit and miss. Emphasis on the latter. That's well put, Archie. Don't butter me up. We're overmatched, and you know it. I do not concede today was wasted. Who knows what you might have stirred up? Wait a minute. Is it possible you've drawn against Mrs. Bruner's check, and it's too late to turn back? It is sufficiently slandered for one day. I shall retire. You have drawn against the check. To be broke is not a disgrace. It is merely a catastrophe. Here comes Dr. Volmer, Wolf's physician. He lives right there. Well, bye, so it can't be a house call. Dr. Volmer, a message for you just now on the phone. A man, no name. You're to be at the Hotel Westland, room 218 at 1130. Said it was urgent and for you to be sure you were loose. It's possible somebody's going to ask you why you came here. I'll pay. Mr. Wolf phoned and asked me to look at his sore throat. Uh, phone's probably tapped and you don't have your tools. I'll say, I came to get Fritz's recipe for a Scargo booger in you. You got it. Dr. Palmer gave you that message? That's correct. Any notion who it might be? Not the Vegas. Not the FBI. Why would they? Perhaps that fellow whose arm you twisted wants to return the compliment. I thought of that. I do not approve of meeting anonymous callers in hotel rooms. But in the absence of other leads, it's a chance we will have to take. We? Oui. You mean you're going with me? In case you missed it, Mr. Goodwin is attempting to be humorous. I can't tell you what a good feeling it gives me to know that when I walk into that hotel room, the face, God knows what, you'll be up here playing with your patio pedalums. Well, you never learn. This is Oncidium. The patio pedalum, known for its handsome and tremendously popular hybrids, is over there. Archie? What? Take care. <laughs>
18? End of the hall. Thanks. It's a long way off. You want to come in and rest for a while? I'd rather remember you the way you are. Follow instruction. Take off your coat and stay a while. Is Wolf's phone tapped? If I made a list of 100 people I expected to meet, you wouldn't be on it. So before you start grilling, fill me in. Sit down. Wolf just tangled with the FBI. I want to know why. How? The works. That's out of bounds. This is out of bounds, my being here. Don't you realize what I'm doing? Not a clue. A couple hours ago, the commission had a phone call from Jim Parazo. Licensing services, state of New York. The FBI has asked Parazo to revoke Wolf's license and yours. Parazo wants the commission to give him anything we got on you. Knowing that I know you, the commission has asked me to make a full report. But before I write it, I want to know what Wolf has done or is doing to get the FBI in his neck. Now, if you can break a rule, so can I. Mrs. Rachel Broner. The Dane that sent those books? The FBI's been dogging her. She hired Wolf to stop her. That's it? Everything? Scout's on her. <laughs> I'm not surprised that Wolf fucking the FBI with his ego. You. An hour ago, I would have agreed with you. And now? Well, you're not exactly fond of Wolf, and you certainly don't love me, so why all this? Does Altus mean anything to you? I read the papers. It's a case you haven't cracked yet. Shot, late fall, no gun. Died between 8 p.m. Friday night, November 20th, and 2 a.m. Saturday. One shot, chest. Through the pump, out the back, nicking 49 inches above the floor. No signs of a struggle. As you said, no gun. Uh, am I going too fast for you? No. Two pier pump place. Lived there for two years, single. You left out the caliber of the bullet. There was no blood. It wasn't there. Need murderer. I'm gonna tell you something now. That's for you and Wolf. And that's all. Well, if we can't use it, there's no point in telling me. You can use it. But it didn't come from me. Here 
material to do an article in the FBI for Herald magazine. At 11 o'clock that Friday night, three FBI men left to Pierpont Place, went around the corner to their car, drove off. Hey, hey, will you let me finish? There are several ways you can figure this. The one I buy is that they phoned him, no answer. Rang his bell, ditto. The gangers out there went in for a bag job. Surprise, he's there. Pulls a gun, one of them shoots first. They find what they want, they leave, taking the bullet with them. Because it was from one of their own guns. All this had a gun? Yeah, uh, S&W 38. Out of state license. They took the gun to him. Who saw them? Anonymous tip, typewritten, untraceable. Giving the full description and the license number. You know Mr. Rugby. He's a top federal man in New York. I went to uh, Mr. Rugby, and I told him that, of course, he knew that uh, all was collecting material to do a piece, and that maybe they had a stake on him that Friday night. And if they had, then I'd appreciate their cooperation. Well, Mr. Rugby told me the FBI had more important things to do than to bother with the hack buckraker. What did he say when you told him his men were seen? I didn't. He would have laughed to my face. <sighs> no, this isn't their time. My thoughts in your police department. Had us gritting our teeth for years. But I could give a year's pay just to hook them and make it stick. Do you understand what I'm saying, Goodwin? Do you catch my drift? This is a fool. If I passed a medical and tied that murder to the FBI, it would not fill our client's order. Unless you swap, you forget the murder if they lay off Mrs. Brunner. Oh, I don't think Kramer would like that. No, that's not his idea at all. What are you smiling at? The alternative. If it's silly to establish that the FBI committed that murder, we will establish that they didn't. Good for us. And then? We'll see. We had nothing. Now, thanks to Inspector Kramer, we have a nut with meat in it. An unsolved murder in which the FBI is involved, whether they committed it or not. Cheer up. More as always before. More as always after. It looks better in the first one. Quite a few women went in the morning. The ladies, man. So they say. Alice Hinckley, the bride to be. Yum, yum. Next. Timothy Quayle, the senior editor of the magazine. Took a poke at a Daily News reporter who tried to corner Miss Hinckley. So chivalry deserves attention. Vincent Yarmick, also an editor. The piece by all is about the FBI was his project. David Aldous. Deceased father. Owns a dress company. Moonshadow Fashions. Presented it that Morris, his only child, had given Moonshadow Fashions the go-by to be a writer, which didn't pay all that well, but the mother slipped him something on the side without the old man's knowing. Goodbye. There's no picture of the mother? Has not and will not see a reporter or anyone else since it happened. <laughs> Goodbye. Yes? My son's in there. I come every day. I know. What? Mrs. Altus, I had to see you, and there was no other way. I don't speak to anyone. My name is Archie Goodwin. I work for Nero Wolf, the private investigator. Go away. Mrs. Altus, Mr. Wolf has been following the case in the papers. He doesn't think the police have been pressing as hard as they should. Wonders if your son's collecting material for an article about the FBI might have anything to do with it. I'm still trying to realize he's gone. That's why I come here every day. Do you want his murder solved? More than anything in the world. 
talk to Mr. Wall. There's nothing I can tell him. I often think there's nothing I can tell him to find out I'm wrong. Three. Five. Five juniper berries and a marinade for a fillet of beef would be overpowering. Three berries is not enough. Shall we split the difference? Four. Five berries. Oh, I cook something else. Everybody's here. Very well, five. But I won't have to taste it to verify their presence. The smell will tell me. Good evening. Please be seated. You are the father, mother, fiancé, and associates of a man murdered several months ago. The murderer has not been exposed. I intend to expose him. The police knew that Morris Altus had been collecting material for an article on the FBI. No such material was found in his apartment. Uh, Mr. Yarmack, I believe you were involved in that project? I was. And Mr. Altus had collected material? Yes. Had he turned it over to you, or was it in his possession? I thought it was in his possession. But as you said, the police claim that they found nothing in his apartment about the FBI. Didn't you draw an inference from that? It wasn't likely that Morris put it somewhere else. Someone took it. If you drew that inference, certainly the police would. You're saying the police are obstructing justice. If they were not convinced that the FBI was responsible for the disappearance of that material, and therefore probably involved in the murder, they would certainly be exploring other possibilities. Mr. Yarmack, for instance. Are they poking about your edges? Why should they? The possibility that you killed Morris Altus and took that material because it was, in some way, a mortal threat. That's ridiculous. Don't erupt. I merely show that the police are either shirking or slighting their duties if you have not given them an impregnable alibi for the evening of November 20th. Have you? Impregnable? No. Have you, Mr. Quayle? Oh, go to hell. If you choose to flout me, Mr. Goodwin, who can handle people your size in pairs, will eject you. If you choose to stay, I ask the question. No. No impregnable alibi. Having proposed a theory that implicates Mr. Yarmack, I will now suggest one for Mr. Quayle. Miss Hinckley, do you have reason to believe that your engagement to Morris Altus displeased Mr. Quayle? You're damn right it displeased me. If not for Morris Altus, she might have married you. Really, Mr. Wood? You overreach. Forgive my zeal. And answer a routine question. If the FBI did not kill Morris Altus, who did? Well, he did not live 36 years without making enemies. Were the articles he wrote for your magazine innocuous? Well, no. No, but if they hurt anybody enough to want to murder him, why would they wait until now? One of them had to wait. He was in jail. What for? Fraud. Real estate swindle. Morris did a piece called The Realty Racket that started an investigation. This guy got nailed and he was sent up for two years. When? About a year and a half ago. With good behavior, he's back on the street. What is his name? I don't remember. Odell. Uh, something Odell. Frank. That's it. Mm. Frank Odell. Mr. Wolf, why all this if it's the FBI? Why don't you ask Mr. Yarmuk what Morris found out? I asked him. He said he didn't know. I don't. With all deference due your grief, I must point out that no individual or group in America would undertake the job I have assigned myself. Therefore, the choice of procedure must be exclusively mine. Is that overreaching? No. Then, good evening. Yeah. 
I'll get the card. Here comes Yarmak. Miss Hinckley? Miss Quayle? And here comes the old lady. By now, Mr. Rugby has heard about our visitors and knows you're double teaming him. The Altus murder and Mrs. Bruner. If not, tonight was a waste. What have you got in mind? Or is this one of those times when the less I know, the more effective I'll be? You took the words right out of my mouth. Meaning you're stumped. Well? Well what? No clever comeback, brilliant rejoinder? Impetuosity is a virtue only when delay is dangerous. I don't get the connection. There isn't any. I just didn't want to disappoint you. How's our tiff with Mr. Hoover progressing? Depends on who you ask. In my opinion, we're three runs down going into the seventh. I told you I'd be able to smell those berries. And I do. Good morning. Good morning, Archie. Did you sleep well? Either my watch has stopped or you're skipping your morning session with the orchids. I have to speak with Lewis Hewitt. Since our phone is doubtless tapped and what I have to say is confidential, I'm going to pay him a visit. Why? I feel the need of a contingency plan in our current endeavor. I'll get the car. You're not going. I've sent for Saul. I want you to find Frank O'Dell for me. You know, a spot of basil wouldn't hurt. Thank you. Merely a suggestion. Who rolls down the drain in one day? The morning schedule and not leaving the house on business. We must need this contingency more than a little. Urgently would not be an exaggeration. Do you mind telling me what it is? When the wheels are in motion. If I told you now, you would say absurd. Impossible. Try to dissuade me. Don't look now, but you're going to have to lose a tail. On the contrary. If I'm seen, so much the better. Do we stay with Goodwin or uh, follow Wolf? Follow him. Favors one case. That's a record. Who's counting? Me. Odell. O D E L L. Fraud. Sent up for two years. If he behaved, he might be out on parole. I'd like to find him fast. Why? Mr. Wolf is interested in his rehabilitation. What do you say? What about that interview you promised me? As soon as this case is over. So help me. Alley nine, ladies. Good luck. Let me guess. Size 10. Let me guess. Frank O'Dell. Mr. Hewitt has a hundred thousand orchids of every conceivable variety. It's excessive. Archie, mistaking taste for jealousy, says I envy Lewis Hewitt. Do I sound envious to you? You want a straight answer? No.
last time I saw Morris Altos was about a year and a half ago in a courtroom where some people who I thought were friends made me the ghost. Is Altos one of them? No, I hardly knew the guy. Met him a couple of times while he was doing that piece. How did you feel when you heard he was dead? I didn't send flowers. On the other hand, I didn't do somersaults. The guy was doing a job. Why'd he pick you? He didn't. He was after bigger fish. I was a sardine, a minnow at Brunner's. Brunner's? Brunner, really. That's where I worked. People at Brunner's made you the goat? No. It was some outside jobs that I had a hand in. The Brunner people were very nice. Vice President arranged for me to see Mrs. Brunner herself. That was the first time I met Morris Altus in her office. The driver's by the car reading a newspaper. What about Wolf? He's still in the greenhouse with what's his name? Hewitt. I'm not a covetous man except when visiting here, but then the beast is loose. <laughs> Here, I think, is a superior example of the warmer growing, mostly Brazilian species of Miltonia. Exquisite. Is that group of yours, the club with the absurd name, still in existence? The Ten for Aristology. Ah, yes. Still devoted to the ideal of perfection in food and drink? Yes, indeed. And it is still my intention, no matter how often you refuse, to have Fritz cook for us one evening with you and Archie in attendance. Shall we say this Thursday, here, 8 p.m.? Are you serious? Let me suggest a favorite of mine. Squab, marinated in light cream, rolled in flour, seasoned with salt, pepper, nutmeg, clove. Oh, pardon me a minute. Hello? Ah, yes, yes. Just a moment. For you. Sounds like Archie. Thank you. Yes? I think it's time for the cat to view the king. Anything wrong? Nothing that will prevent Fritz from cooking for the Ten for Aristology on Thursday. The members will be thrilled. How can I ever repay you? I was coming to that. Pardon me. My name is Mrs. Rachel Brunner. Mr. I know. This way, please. To watch Nero Wolf pour a beer is a lesson in precision. To watch him consume it is a tribute to thirst. I promised Cohen an interview for the Gazette on what it's like to live and work with you. How's that for an opener? Predictably feeble. Do you think Mr. Cohen would publish a brief item on Fritz preparing a meal for the Ten for Aristology on Thursday? No. It could well be my obituary. That might appeal to him. Secret doors? What next, Mr. Wolf? That depends, madam, on one of two things. Either you suffered a mental lapse, which is pardonable, or you played me for a fool, which is not. Take Mrs. Brewer's coat. Thank you, no. Please be seated. I, I, I can't, really. I'm in a hurry. If you do not sit, you compel me to stand, which will make me more irritable than I already am. If I were you, I'd sit. Oh, 
proceed. Frank Odell. Well, I don't know anyone by that name. He works for you. I have several hundred employees. Many of them been sent to prison for fraud in the last two years? I see. Oh, yes, I remember now. Frank Odell. What about him? You tell us. Well, he was involved in something illegal, having nothing to do with Boone Realty. Uh, a magazine writer exposed him. Do you recall the writer's name? Mm -hmm. Morris Alters. He was murdered about two months ago. I met him once in my office when he came to discuss the Odell situation. At the time of his death, Morris Altus was working on a piece on the FBI. And you think because I sent all those books about the FBI that this... Exactly. <laughs> well, that's sheer coincidence. Totally unrelated. With one exception. The meeting in your office. Two exceptions. Two. There's another link between Morris Alters and myself, so indirect and tenuous, I wouldn't even mention it. But for the possibility that you will find it out and accuse me of withholding information. We begin to understand each other. Enlighten me. Well, my secretary, Miss Darko, lives in the building where Mr. Alters was killed. Two Pierpont Place? Mm hmm In the apartment directly beneath this. How did you miss that? Excuse me for living. The day you met Altus in your office, was this Dacos present? Yes. Did they know each other prior to that meeting? No. Several months later, Miss Dacos moved. Mentioned that one day she bumped into Mr. Altus. They became good friends. She never mentioned his name again uh, until the murder. How did his death affect her? Oh, she was extremely disturbed. What are you thinking what I'm thinking? Wouldn't you be disturbed if your neighbor was murdered? Quite right, Mrs. Bruner. Mr. Goodwin has a regrettable sense of the obvious, causing him to dive into the nearest pool. Which is why I'll never be one of those master detectives credited with patience for what is really inertia. you must endure a while longer. You have a chore for me that can't wait. Alas. But you ordered dinner for two when you ate waste. I was hoping Mrs. Bruner might join me. Will you do me that honor? Sarah Dacos, no, I... Never heard Morris mention anyone by that name. You sure? I'm positive. Why do you ask? She lives at 2 Pierpont Place, in the apartment directly below the one your son had. Has. Pardon me? My son's lease isn't up till June. We maintain the apartment? Exactly as it was. Nothing's been changed since that day, including the phone. I call sometimes. And he doesn't answer, I tell myself he's out. You suppose I might go there and look around? You won't disturb anything? There are only three or four men in the world who can be depended upon to base their decisions on pure reason. And even we will bear watching. I think you are too modest. I think you are cheeky. I think you like that. <laughs> so I do, <laughs> madam. So I do. Your glass. No, thank you. I've had enough. This meal may be all you receive for your hundred thousand dollars. In that case, fill it up. It is the fashion to say that anything is possible. The truth is, very few things are. You're not optimistic about my problem. It changes shape. It is difficult to come to grips with. Suppose I said you could drop it and keep the money. I would think the FBI is close to your secret. Suppose I ordered you to drop it. I would be sure of it. 
and would refuse. Mr. Wolf, I've never been frightened in my life. I'm frightened now. What time you visited the scene of the crime? The Black Mountain case. I can understand why, assuming they shot him, they took the bullet, but why take the gun? Unless it's the gun they shot him with. Well, that implies a struggle, and Inspector Kramer says there were no signs of one. Here she comes. Describe her. Wow. And could you be a little more precise? Wow, wow. Thank you. She's down there. Now what? Leave it open. Open? A fraction of an inch. Anything else? That dictionary. What about it? Pick it up. I promise Mrs. Alpes I wouldn't touch anything. Move to the center of the room. How's this? Satisfactory. Now, drop it. Drop it? Drop it. So she calls the police. Then I have miscalculated. Miss Tacos? Oh. Archie Goodwin. We met the other day. This is Nero Wolf. Wow. Mrs. Bruner told me about your meeting and what was said. I expected a visit. Not like this. In the future, perhaps. Now would be premature. We were just having a look about. Mr. Goodwin, with characteristic clumsiness, drop that dictionary. Unabridged. <laughs> then you don't want to question me. It was not my intention, but uh, perhaps since you're here. Two birds, one stone. If you'll be so kind. Well, what can I tell you? I moved here about a year ago. A few weeks after I moved in, I bumped into Mr. Arthur, who reminded me that we'd met in Mrs. Bruner's office. We had drinks occasionally, dinner several times. The end. It didn't progress to intimacy. No. No matter how you define intimacy. Did you dine with Mr. Alters on Friday evening, November 20th? No. But you were out. A lecture at the new school. Easily verified. I'm sure. What time did you return to your apartment? A little before 11. I was going to turn on the news when I heard footsteps going down the stairs as if they were trying to be quiet. I went to the window and saw three men leave the building and turn the corner quickly. Could you identify them? 30-ish, neat, sort of athletic. FBI type. The FBI is involved in this, too. Mr. Goodwin digresses. You saw the three men leave. What then? Then I went to bed. Thought nothing more of it till the janitor found Mr. Alders' body the next morning. You told the police what you told us? Yes. Am I free to leave now? You always were. What was the word? Word? The one you were looking up when you accidentally dropped the dictionary. Miss Stackhouse would toy with us. Is it forbidden? Imprudent. Meaning I am under suspicion? It would not be difficult to establish an hypothesis. Oh, just what I always wanted, an hypothesis. The day you met Morris Alters in Mrs. Bruner's office, you were inordinately attracted to him. Love at first sight, my favorite opening. You moved here in order to meet him again. Do you know what it's like to be unattractive, unloved? A relationship developed, casual to him, deadly serious to you. That's always been my problem, caring too much. When he told you he was marrying Miss Hinckley, the bubble burst. Ominous music here. You shot him from just about where you are now. We're standing there, numb, wondering what to do next, when the doorbell rang. Roused from my stupor. You ran downstairs to your apartment, heard the three men enter Alter's place, take what they wanted, and leave. There better be a good punchline. You knew Alter's was preparing a piece on the FBI. Had received warnings. Why not point the finger of suspicion at them? Aren't I the clever little thing? You followed them out, got their license number, 
sent it to the police anonymously. That is? That's it. What do you think of it? Well, it's my first hypothesis. What do you think? It won't pass muster. There's a gap a mile wide. Hooray for our side. The gun? The gun. I can't prove a thing without it. What did I do with it? The gun. If you're a quarter as bright as I think you are, you got rid of it. How? Where? Backyard. She buried it. First place the police would think of looking. She sent it out in the garbage. Too much chance of it being found and traced. Can I play? By all means. Suppose I threw it in the sewer. That's not bad. The river. Better yet. Actually, the number of places I might have disposed of that gun are endless. So even if your hypothesis were valid, which it's not, you couldn't make it stick. Sad, but true. On that note, and despite how much fun it's been talking to you guys, I have to go. I thank you for your time. You know. Morris Aldous was a fine man. I hope with all my heart you nail who did it. Seem relaxed, all things considered. Why not? Like the good farmer whose fields are planted, I trust to providence. Who was that clever thing you said yesterday? Which clever thing? When Dr. Vollmer asked why he didn't exercise more. It is wiser where there is a choice to trust to inertia. It's the greatest force in the world. It was better yesterday. Thank you. I don't... What is it? I can explain that. Two boys were having a catch, threw the ball through that window, which I had fixed and didn't want to say anything about. Let's see the ball. They were such nice boys, I gave it back to them. In what way, nice? They found it leisure and insisted on paying. They don't make kids the way they used to. <laughs> what are you doing? Wouldn't it split? Too many anchovies in the El Pesto again tonight, Fritz. How many times do I have to tell you? Well, I do what I can. Did you think it was far too salty, Archie? Yes, I think Mr. Wolf is just a bit grumpy today. And, uh, not enough chive. You see, Fritz, he talks those percentages, 35, 45. It's gonna be one thing or another each time you make it. More anchovies and, uh, less anchovies, I mean, and now, how is your mother these days? Very well. Hale and hearty at uh, 81. 81. <laughs> Splendid. Uh, is she still able to travel? Yes. I had thought perhaps uh, you might write her a letter and invite her to pay us a visit this winter if it's to her taste. Uh, she's uh, never been to this country, has she?
lady. I'm a cop. All right? Easy. What's the matter? What happened? My bag. A man. Well, I wonder, what are you doing down here walking around this time of night? You're lucky that's all he took. You got a name? What for? Well, we might get lucky and have him. Ha. Huh. No. You want to watch a complaint? Hey, lady. Remember, to do your best, you've got to be at your best, because someday you may be called upon to pilot a jet plane across the continent to take the wheel and bring a great ship safely into port to drive an ambulance to disaster areas. That's why I want all Secret Squadron members to drink Ovaltine every day. Here's an important Secret Squadron message. Classic Ovaltine's back in chocolate malt and original malt flavors, and still available in rich chocolate. Do I have a VCR? Boy, do I have a VCR. I bought this one, but it didn't have remote control. So, I bought this one, but the salesman didn't tell me about slow motion. And then I got one in stereo, but it wasn't broadcast. At Circuit City, our professional sales counselors are trained to ask the right questions, give the right advice, and make sure you get the product that's right for you. Then, I decided to buy a video camera. I should have gone to Circuit City. Circuit City, the intelligent choice. A message from Osco Drug. Hi, it's Mother again. I guess by now everyone's heard about Gourmet Pride soup. Gourmet Pride has lots more meat and vegetables than cup of soup or cup of noodles. And Gourmet Pride tastes fresh and delicious. You know, just like Mother always makes, when she has the time. <laughs> Gourmet Pride soups are featured this week at Osco Drug. Osco Drug, count on people who care. Suddenly, there's a whole new way of looking at sports sedans. The Mitsubishi Galant. Its design is dynamic and spirited. Unlike Camry or Accord, Galant GS offers the world's most advanced electronic suspension, available anti-lock braking, and was voted Japan's car of the year. But Galant's most significant development isn't just the technology that's gone into it, but the feeling you get out of it. The 1989 Galant. Mitsubishi. Suddenly, the obvious choice. We'll return to the KCBS movie special, Nero Wolf, starring Thayer David, following these messages and station identification. You already knew that you pay a lot less at C&R than at other stores. What you probably didn't know is that at C&R, you actually get a lot... Please eat meal fit for a wolf. Really? Vulgar, but catchy. I like it. You would. Tonight, at the home of Lewis Hewitt, North Shore, Long Island, the Ten for Aristology, a group devoted to the best in food and drink, will sample the wares of Fritz Brenner, renowned cook for the private investigator Nero Wolfe. Mr. Wolfe and his associate, Archie Goodwin, will be present at the dinner tonight as guests of honor. Renowned chef, how about that? Flattery will not appease. I do not like to do this sort of thing. Mr. Hewitt has a great many orchids I should like to possess. To obtain them, he demanded your services in return. I need time to prepare. The orchids will arrive this morning. You will return with a truck to Hewitt's house, where all the ingredients and implements you need are assembled. Archie and I will follow later. It's all over the place. Take a look. Gently, gently. Fritz, it's time to go. I go, but I go under protest. What time will Archie and you be there? About 8 p.m. Mr. 
Goodwin will sign that. Unveiling. Allow me, gentlemen. Feast your eyes on the pride of the Andes, that exquisite species, Miltonia. Imbidium. Lilia, one of the most popular of orchids. This is the dwarf species. <laughs> What's so funny about Lilia? Oncidium. The Oricata. Wolf, may I ask a favor? What is it, Theodore? Would it be all right, after we've taken care of the orchids and cleaned up here, if I spent the night with my sister in New Jersey? By all means, and give her my regards. That's a break. Two down, two to go. W-38, that's Altus' gun, all right. No identification. Nothing but the gun. I can't wait to see Kramer's face when I hand it to him. As usual, you are too direct and premature. I promised Kramer we'd give him anything we came up with. I'm not going against my word. I did not embark on this adventure to benefit Inspector Kramer, but to profit myself. If my contingency succeeds, as I have every expectation it will, then and only then will I consider Inspector Kramer's plight.
step into my parlor book. This is deplorable. Archie, call the police. Okay, cut the comedy. You know where we are. Tell them I think we've caught the fellas responsible for the recent rash of burglaries in this neighborhood. We're government men. FBI. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, of course you are. Ask for Inspector Kramer. Go ahead. Hold it. Howdy, howdy. I'm getting my credentials. Very well. I presume you have credentials, too. Very probably forgeries. The police laboratory can tell. Now listen, you fat. Flattery will not improve your situation. I'll keep these until their genuineness can be established. Those are property of the federal government. So you say. What more proof do you want? Perhaps one of your superiors could pay me a call. Mr. Rugby, for instance. Show them out before they tax my generosity, which under the circumstances has been extreme. Is it? Police, open up. Sarah Douglas? Yes. Search warrant. Go ahead, don't you want to read it? Make yourself at home. Thank you. Tell me what you're looking for. Maybe I can help. A uh, 38 caliber S&W. Belonged to a neighbor of yours, Mr. Altus. I don't know what makes you think I've got it. But be my guest. I've got a busy day tomorrow. Is this going to take long? Well, uh, that depends on how lucky we get. Uh, sometimes we can look for hours and not find a thing. And then sometimes... Sometimes uh, we hit it right off the bat. It's impossible. I got rid of How did you know she kept it in the fish tank? Odor. The gun smelled of fish and related matter. And drop in the dictionary? Anyone but the murderer would have been frightened. Call the police. You're a wolf, isn't it? Mr. Rugby, the head of the Federal Bureau of Investigation in New York, would like to speak to you. Tell him to be here at 11 this morning and bring the bullet. 11 a.m. and bring the bullet. He doesn't know what bullet you're talking about, but he'll be here. These raspberries are exceptional. He says the raspberries are exceptional. Did you know that some orchids can live as long as 250 years? Humbling thought. What about their credentials? One must cut the callus each morning so they can drink. Their credentials? This is a renin tanda, an epiphytic orchid of monopoidal habits found in the uh, Asian tropics. 
I want the credentials that you took from two of my men last night by force. They entered my house by force. I merely met force with force. Give me the credentials and we'll talk on even terms. I have no intention of talking on even terms. Your men left their credentials because they dared not call the police to rescue them. And your surveillance of Mrs. Bruner and of me, and I pledge to leave those credentials in my safe deposit box where they were placed this morning and take no action against your men for their invasion of my premises. I have to have the credentials. Then take me to court. You know, I can't do that. I have no desire to feud. My sole purpose is to do the job I have hired for. If there is no further harassment of my client or me, I shall have no reason to use the credentials. If your sole purpose is to do the job you were hired for, why have you been investigating a homicide we have no connection with? Why has Mr. Goodwin gone twice to visit Mrs. Altus? Do you think one of your men killed Morris Altus? No. Your servants betrays uncertainty. Which is why those two broke in here last night, to see what, if anything, I discovered. Let me relieve you. Your men did not shoot Morris Altus. They didn't? Altus was dead when they made their illegal entry. Finding what they wanted, they left, taking with them the bullet that killed him to persuade you of their innocence. No comment? That is not necessary. You need merely agree to suspend the surveillance of Mrs. Bruner and to produce the bullet when I request it. In return, I will conclusively clear your men by disclosing the murderer. I'll have to think about it. You have ten seconds. Five. Everything confidential? Mm -hmm. Well? All right. Archie, show him in. My pleasure. Show who in? All agreements are off. Before you work yourself into a fit, let me say that Inspector Kramer regrets his suspicion that any agent of your bureau was a murderer. Uh, apologize to someone who withheld evidence? Never. Gentlemen, if you insist on fighting, you may leave. If you wish to untangle this mess to your mutual benefit, be seated. Hey, this red chair is mine. I always sit in this red chair. Tough. You must bear with Inspector Kramer. He's a creature of habit. You want to clear your men of Morris Halters' murder. You have a prime suspect and the probable weapon, lacking only the fatal bullet to clinch your case. Are we agreed so far? Give him the bullet. This bullet was found in the living room of the Morris Altus apartment around 11 p.m. Friday, November 20th. Archie? Now that it's yours, I've never seen it. You're damn right, it's mine. <laughs> Regarding emotions and desserts, I favor the Anglo-Saxon theory. Freeze them. Hide them in your belly. <laughs> now, as to my fee. I thought you never discussed a case while dining. A case, no, but compensation is another matter. Would an additional uh, 50,000 be adequate? Adequate, but not appealing. 75? I need a lot of money and often soak my clients. 
But at bottom, I am a romantic. I'll send a check for a hundred thousand first thing in the morning. Expecting anyone? No. I'll get it. I regret we didn't meet years ago. Pardon me. Let him ring. You were saying, madam. That I regret we didn't meet years ago. Better late. Than never. No, just better late. Now I have the wisdom and experience to cope with your charms. Years ago, I would have been helpless. Are you sure a hundred thousand is enough? <laughs> How do you define your job? Besides keeping Mr. Wolf from falling asleep and only waking for meals, I'm cut out for two things. To jump in and grab something before the other guy does, and to collect pieces of the puzzle for him to work on. What Archie means is... What Archie says. Since my interview, you're not even supposed to be here. I was merely going to say you are too modest. The fact is, I do nothing without him. He is inquisitive, impetuous, alert, skeptical, resourceful. Underpaid? Wit is not his strong suit. You know how many times he's used that line? And since you seem determined to drive me off, I depart. Wait a minute. How about that picture? Picture? I promised him a photo of us to go with the interview. Very well, but uh, just one. How do you want it? Uh, shake hands like you just saw the big one. We did. You ready? Yes. One, two, three. Cheese. <laughs> about to pour all this into this. Impossible? Wait, it's Pope Pete the...